We've just rolled into another winter here in Melbourne, Australia. We're going to cover some temporary but effective and cheap ways that we can improve the efficiency, comfort and air tightness of a rental property. When it comes to rental properties, there's a lot of things that we're sort of a bit wary about doing because we don't want to do anything permanent that the homeowner is going to have a problem with. So what's your experience though, coming into a rental property here? <laughs> it is cold here, it's cold. The heating system can barely keep up with the cold. Drafty, uncomfortable, and basically we can't turn on the heat and expect it to be comfortable here because the heat just basically leaves the house. Five minutes later, it's cold again. So it's, it's pretty sad. Yeah. We want to keep it warmer. We just, there's almost no point in keeping the heat on. Yeah. Now this home though, it's got, it's got everything. It's got evaporative cooling, it's got ducted heating, it's got refrigerative split system heating cooling, and then it's got all the old school ventilation stuff as well, right? Yeah, a lot of history in, in yeah. houses like this. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I've never seen this before, but this has got some sort of a supply air vent in the wall. Well, I think that and the wall, the vents in the walls around the place uh, show an earlier time when combustion appliances were the norm here. Yeah. So unvented gas heaters or fireplace, it looks like there used to be a fireplace here. They need fresh air to operate safely. And if you don't, it's dangerous. Well, there are no combustion appliances like that, at least unvented gas heaters in here. So a lot of that stuff is unnecessary. Yeah. One thing that I freaked out about when I saw it was they put in a new split system and then you had a a vent just sitting directly above it, which is where the, the supply air is for that split yeah. system. In the summertime, that just sucks hot outside air right over the coils yep. and just yeah. wastes energy. And could you imagine also how fast the filters will get dirty as well? Yep, it's not a clean place to be getting fresh air yep. from the wall like that. You've paid a lot of careful attention. You've started thinking about where this home is leaking a lot of its air. Where do you think it sort of leaked the majority of its air? Because then we're gonna talk through exactly what we've done to remediate each one of these leakage points. Yeah, so I went a little bit overboard with the amount of detail about where things were leaking. Like mm -hmm. I did a blower door test, an infrared survey, but I measured individual leaks all around the place to and find out where, where things are leaking. And where, what was it when you first started? What, what leakage rate did you get? And we can sort of, you can talk about permeability rates, but we can sort of assume that ACHE changes an hour at 50 PA is sort of similar. In Pretty the, similar. It's in the ballpark. Yeah, yep. so the test, I did a test in negative pressure here. Yeah. 30 cubic meters per hour per square meter. That's insane. That's so like that. three times worse than the maximum you should be doing for the building code. Wow. So it's really bad. So it's 30 air changes an hour roughly. Can I just bounce around this also? This had a major flaw with the ducted heating system connected to an outdoor area where there was just no way for that air to get back to the return as well, wasn't there? Yeah, there's problems with how things are rented, how they're advertised. Yes. Like it's as if that place was supposed to be a nice, it's called on, on the, the plans, a multi-purpose room. Really the only uh, purpose you should use it for is sort of uh, exhibits of how not to do stuff. Yeah, well, that, that's like a DIY that someone thought, let's pump heat in there. And then that would put this whole house into a negative pressure. If there's air going out there, that would have been just sucking the cold to make up for that air that you're losing into that room. Sure. Yeah. It's, it's insanity. That, that's total waste of energy because most of the time uh, no one goes in there because yeah. you have to actually leave the house to get yeah. and then go through another door to get back into that space. Mm -hmm not actually connected to the house. So it's, most of the time, it's just a total waste of energy. Now, the other sad thing about this property as well is that you've got these big gaping holes for an evaporative cooler, but the evaporative cooler has got a problem. Big problem. And this is another thing, the poor renter, I was, uh, to be honest, I was here with 50 other people looking for a place to rent yes. uh, in, in Melbourne. Tough rental market right now. And so we basically take whatever we can get. Yeah, sure. So the place looks nice, but then they say, well, you inspected the place, but really you're only allowed like 15 minutes at the most to inspect a place. And they don't tell you stuff, like they probably don't even know the problems with this place. So up in the roof, one of the evaporative cooler ducts has been ripped and disconnected from the unit. So it's basically just a hole right to the roof space. Jeez, that's insane. Year round. So it's just, 
insane amounts of air just gushing from the roof all the time. Wow. The property manager doesn't know this stuff. They don't care. The uh, landlord honestly just wants no questions asked and some passive income. So the poor renter is just trying to make do, trying to find a place to live, be comfortable and not spend a fortune. Yeah. So Sean, let's talk about what we use to sort of remediate this place. We use the, um, the U-Ripper terrible tape, which yeah. came in great help when we were dealing with all those big gaping holes around all of your boots for your ducted heating system. And then there was also the connectivity for the return, which uh, was pretty much completely open, sucking your musky air from underneath your subfloor straight into the return for you to breathe. Now that ducted heating system had, uh, when you got here, a lot of dust on that filter, didn't it? But not on the, the side that we would have all thought. Right, so it's getting a bit into the building science here, but yeah, what, what we could see from all the dirt on, on the filter was that the air was actually not going through the filter in the way that you would expect is basically stack effect was sucking air from the, the underfloor space and leaving its dirt as it comes through on the filters. So all that filthy air from underneath the house is coming in, goes into the return and then gets recirculated here. And then otherwise just we breathe that air. So for the ducted return, I've seen your other videos where you deal with this in a much more permanent way, yeah. but here, uh, there was a limit to what we could do. So we use some of not just any tape, but good quality tape that you yep. guys sell that's gonna last for at least the time that we're here. Yeah, which is a malleable fall tape, absolutely. Yep. The ducted heating outlets, all of those boots just completely open. This is really common though. It's unfortunately completely standard yeah. construction. Yeah. The register boot needs to be connected to the interior living space yep. and nowhere else. Yep. That's the only way the air should be able to go from the duct to the house and that's it. And you know, the actual um, professionals that install these ducted heating systems, th th all they're worried about is just getting a fixing, but not an air barrier connection to your building envelope. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this one's fortunate in that there's some nails holding it in place, Yeah. but there's no solid connection of that ductwork to the living space and that needs to be hermetically sealed. There's no good reason yeah. for air to go anywhere except yeah, the indoors. Well, you've got elevated pressures at those points, uh, especially at the return. Yep. Now that return was also open to the wall cavity that goes up into the roof. So it's connected to the roof as well as the subfloor. <laughs> yep. And another very dumb, but unfortunately pretty universal practice of using a wall cavity as part of the ductwork. Wall, wall cavities aren't built to be ductwork, so that should just be fully ducted to the register on the wall. So that practice of using the building cavity as ductwork prohibited in codes abroad for 15 years at yeah. least. Sean, the evaporative cooler, it's dead in the water. That's how you got it. That's how you received it. How have you chosen to resolve or to temporarily deal with it? <laughs> so when we rented the place, it said on the rental agreement that the evaporative cooler was not included. What they meant was it is not working. There's a major problem with it, but they didn't really say that in yeah. the in the rental agreement. So what we did was to block these off because they're never going to be used yeah. for the rest of the building life. Uh, so we want to block it off as well as we could and deal with the fact that there's no insulation yeah. in a hole in every one of these rooms. Yeah. So we took uh, some trash bags, yep. just regular trash bags from, from the supermarket, mm -hmm. stuffed them with polyester insulation, non-toxic yep. polyester yep. insulation. I just cut with a box oh. cutter, stuffed that in there and made a pretty good insulation coverage. Mm -hmm. And then we used the contact adhesive yeah. to make a seal over there. Yeah. All this stuff is totally removable. Yeah, like yeah, that's when, right. we, when we move out, uh, hopefully we'll be here for a while, but yep. when we move out, we can take that off, yeah. remove the insulation if we need to, yes. if they ever decide to try to use that evaporative cooler yeah. again. Yeah, it's can. all reversible. So Sean, you went through and you sort of got a really good idea of what was leaking the most so that we could really focus on those points and then you got a result. What did we end up at? Well, before the biggest leaks were the evaporative cooler, the heating system, uh, the bath fans, and these wall vents. Those were the big big things that we addressed. And we started at a permeability of about 30, which is bad. I mean, it's ungodly bad. Shocking. And then we got it down to about 15, which is a 50% reduction with a couple hours of work and a couple hundred bucks of material. It's, as a renter, that's absolutely 
well worth the investment because mm -hmm. we just want to be comfortable. Absolutely, and healthy. So all up, not that expensive to conduct these retrofits, right? No, I mean, we actually, we had the bag of insulation and we had the, the tape, the contact paper, uh, some masking tape, all told, uh, probably- Draft stoppers. Draft stoppers. This is a draft stopper. It goes above your exhaust fan that isn't covered over the top. So it stops permanent, constant air leakage via your exhaust fans when, you, when they're not in use. So definitely less than a couple hundred bucks for all that stuff. And that'll make a big difference to the comfort and potentially also the health of the house as well. For sure. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to being more comfortable. <laughs>